Today we're flying into the void of space to look at some orbital mechanics, specifically how we calculate the path of an object in 2D orbits in some of our videos and Godot projects. Let's code the motions of planets, moons, comets, and satellites in our simplified 2D space using state vectors. Before we start, we'll fetch the gravitational constant, which is a crucial number in our calculations. Think of it as the universal glue that holds our cosmos together. We'll also fetch references to our object's position and velocity state vectors, which will be used throughout the formulas. Next, we'll calculate some basic properties. How far our object is from the center and how fast it's moving. This step sets the stage for understanding the dynamics of how our object travels through space. From there, we'll compute the angular momentum. Think of it as the cosmic dance of our object, twirling around its central partner. This momentum helps us predict the object's future path, anchoring it in a stable orbit around its central body. With our object's speed and path known, we can determine the size of its orbit. The size characterized by the semi-major axis tells us the length of the orbit's longest dimension. This measurement defines how large the orbit is, and whether it's tightly bound near the central body or widely stretched out into space. By contrast, the semi-minor axis will tell us the orbit's shortest dimension, so we'll then calculate the eccentricity of the orbit. This measure indicates how stretched or squashed the orbit is. A perfect circle has an eccentricity of zero, meaning the major and minor axes are of equal length. As the eccentricity approaches one, the orbit becomes more elongated, reflecting a greater ratio between the major and minor axes' length. So eccentricity not only tells us about the orbit's shape, but also quantifies the extent to which it looks like a circle. In three-dimensional space, the argument of periapsis tells us the angle from the ascending node, where the orbit crosses upward through a reference plane. This element helps orient the orbit within a three-dimensional context, accounting for its tilt and direction relative to other celestial planes. However, in our two-dimensional model, the orbits always lie flat with an inclination of zero degrees, eliminating the need for an ascending node. Thus, in 2D, we repurpose the argument of periapsis and simplify it to be just the angle from a fixed reference direction. This simplification makes understanding and calculating orbits easier when we're dealing with objects on a flat surface, because now this just represents how the orbit is rotated around the central body. The true anomaly measures the angle from the periapsis to the object's current position on its orbital path, providing a precise location of the object at any given time in its orbit. With these calculations, we can finally define the remaining elements of our orbit, refining our understanding of its location and trajectory through space and time. I'll summarize the elements in a few seconds. We'll also calculate the orbital period, which is the time it takes for our object to complete one full trip around its current orbit. We get these distances and some more anomalies that further describe the object's position and movement along its path. This code only supports elliptical orbits, Depending on the object's speed, we'll check if it's in an elliptical orbit or if it follows open paths like hyperbolas. Assuming we have not reached escape velocity, we'll assume we have an elliptical orbit, and we can determine some key details about the ellipse path. We finish up by logging all these details, providing a comprehensive snapshot of the orbit for further analysis and study. To sum up here are the Keplerian orbital elements, the semi-major axis, which gives a general size, the eccentricity, which gives a general shape, telling us how stretched or round the orbit is. The inclination, which we won't use in 2D. The longitude of the ascending node, which isn't used in 2D either. The argument of periapsis, which is repurposed and simplified in our 2D space, allowing us to know how the orbit is rotated. The true anomaly, giving us a sense of where the object is right now on its orbital path. And the mean anomaly, which provides a measure of the object's position along its orbit based on a circular approximation, useful for timing and position predictions. And that's how we're charting the course of an object in 2D space, using GD script and math to explore the celestial motion of the cosmos. By understanding these orbits and the parameters that define them, we can predict the movements of bodies in our 2D star system and harness this knowledge for game mechanics and entertainment. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know what other topics you might find useful. Thanks for watching the Pathfinders Codex.